good morning today is thursday it is april 13th so this week i have had tonsillitis which has been fun so i have been mostly resting lying down napping a lot i'm so tired but today i feel like I've hopefully turned a little bit of a quarter. Never mind the profusely sweating part. I still have no energy. So I've been normal person sick with my tonsillitis and I've been lying around and rest is good. You know, screw capitalism, we need to rest, we're not robots. That's all been well and good, but I also have two other chronic illnesses, one of which is called arachnoiditis. It's a chronic pain condition that I have since I had a failed spinal surgery a few years ago and arachnoiditis essentially causes the nerves around my spinal cord and my lower back to stick together, clump together, and they're kind of getting worse as we go. And one of the things that you really are supposed to do to counter that is to walk every day and to stretch every day. So I've been doing a small bit of yoga every day, but I haven't been walking because I've been mostly feeling like I'm about to pass out. So today, because my back is essentially in agony and I just feel like I can't lie down any longer, I'm gonna go for a little walk in a forest nearby, so wish me luck. from my walk which was lovely very short but really nice quit walkie but we'll live with that i had some lunch and then i came upstairs and did some yoga so i have practiced yoga every day since the 5th of may 2020 so two years and 11 months ago oh my word i'm coming up on three years that's crazy because my back's a bit sore i opted to do a different one than was on the calendar today so i do yoga with adrian and i follow her calendars and today was like a 40 minute one so i opted to do yoga to calm your nerves not that i'm feeling particularly nervous today it just seemed a bit more gentle in saying that i am anxiety on legs i'm gonna chill out a bit now my ear is really paining me at the moment woohoo gonna read some of my book so i'm reading at the moment lonely castle in the mirror it's by mizuki tsujimara it is going well so far it's about a girl in japan named kokoro and she has stopped going to school she's in middle school she stopped going because of bullying and then one day when she's home alone her mirror in her bedroom starts to glow and she touches it and she goes through the mirror and ends up in this castle there's a little girl there wearing a wolf mask who tells her that she is the wolf queen and there are also seven other kids there excuse me six other kids seven in total what they have to do is they have to find a key so whoever finds this key and then finds the wishing room can make a wish and that wish will come true they get to hang out at the castle in the meantime and so on and so forth so i'm almost halfway through and i actually don't know what's going on still those are the facts that i have essentially so i'm really intrigued really enjoying it but um, i have heard that this book is some people's favorite book ever so i'm kind of really intrigued by that so far i'm not getting that but i think the real crux of the story is kind of in the last third of the book which is the part that causes everybody to say like oh this book is like the best thing ever i hear it's quite sad so i'm looking forward to that bit because it's me and i love a sad story but i will keep you updated anyway Evening. 
it's Friday, so it's Friday the 14th, it's half past 8, so it's quite unusual for me to actually not be in bed. Went with my mum today, we looked after my niece, she's three, we brought her to the park and we brought her to the beach and she was here all day then and then her brother who's two came as well. It's been a long day because my body's been a bit bollocks shall we say. I woke up this morning, I seem to have this habit lately of waking up in the middle of the night and then not being able to go to sleep for hours. So I woke up maybe around three and uh, I finished this guy, Lonely Castle in the Mirror, the Tsujimara one. While I was reading it, I was enjoying it, but I was wondering why so many people say that this is their favourite book. I was like, this is like a solid three stars or whatever, like, but they're not wrong. The last kind of third of the book, it really picks up the parts of it that I got really immersed in and found a little bit creeped out by. It was so much more kind of heartfelt and difficult to read than I expected. The ending tied up really neatly but not in an obvious way. It almost made me feel like I'd love to go back and read this from the beginning to kind of pick up on clues that were there that I had missed about like what's going on. I did maybe have a little bit of an inkling but I kind of was like no it's not that and then but I didn't I didn't guess everything and it was it was a trip but I mean that in the best way. I really really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars in the end. I finished that about 5 a.m and then went back to sleep for a while. <laughs> Something that I haven't really mentioned much is I have been reading Never Night by Jay Kristoff and I started it on the 1st of April but I've been reading two chapters a day so I am currently on page 333. I've been kind of slowly working my way through it. Some days I really enjoy my two chapters and some days I'm a bit like meh and some days I'm like didn't like that so it's got its pros and cons it ebbs and flows the characters are interesting the setting is interesting but something about the story is kind of making me not really warm to the characters you now they're very flawed characters um there's a bit of a romance in there as well and i just feel a bit weird about it i, I feel like they could potentially have more of a brotherly sisterly relationship than a romantic one. Kind of about like a school of uh, would-be assassins or assassin trainees. It's essentially about like them being tortured to kind of fine-tune them into what will be blades. So there will be four blades picked out of what was originally a class of like 27 but they're like dropping like flies, they're dying the whole time and Jay Kristoff didn't hold back like it's it's gruesome. I don't hate it but I don't love it either. So I finished Lonely Castle in the Mirror, so then I was like, oh, well, I need another book to read when I want to read more than two chapters, because Never Night has a buddy read between me and a friend on Instagram. So I decided to pick up Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I am 68 pages in, so I'm on chapter five. So we follow a girl named Chloe Brown. Chloe is from quite a well-to-do family in the UK and she decides that she wants to move out of the family home after having a near-death experience and she has this list, kind of like this bucket list of things that she wants to do. And it is a romance, I'm not too far into it. I'm not much of a romance reader but I'm kind of trying to introduce them a bit more because they can be quite fun and you can kind of sometimes work your way through them quite quickly and they're not too intellectually demanding, which is nice sometimes, isn't it? And we're following Chloe, but what I really am enjoying about this book so far is that our protagonist, Chloe, is chronically ill. I just feel like that's great, like that's incredible, but representation matters. I am chronically ill, I live with a chronic pain condition or two. I never see that represented in the media as such. Not in the media, but kind of in different media forms like books or films or video games or whatever. It's really nice to see that, like obviously not that I want an imaginary character to be suffering, but the fact of the matter is that there are many of us out there that live with chronic pain and it is difficult and it does impact our lives significantly. There's a huge element of not being believed there's this element of like people thinking that illness is a moral failure, which is ridiculous. I won't get into that too much, but I'm just really enjoying that aspect of it because I just, I don't see it in books. All of the books that I've read that are so kind of intellectually heavy and so, so smart and so worldly and 
so well-rounded, but they just don't have sick people. Not as their protagonists, anyway. What I also like about it is that it is kind of racially diverse as well, but without that being like a focal point of the story. So the chronic illness slash chronic pain stuff is just a facet of Chloe's life. And then the racial diversity, it's just there. It's not there as like a talking point. It just is what it is, which is nice because that's real life, right? We're not all white men, like, or white women, whatever the case may be. Also, one more thing that I really like about her is that she's not this tiny white woman. She says at one point that she is not small, that she's tall, she's broad, and she's quite chubby as well. And I'm like, hello. Um, it's nice to see that represented as well because what kind of angers me with romances as well is there's so much focus on this woman being tiny, so small. She fit in a little matchbox in your pocket. She's so petite. I'm like, feck off. Like just this, this real lack of diversity. So I'm enjoying that so far as well. I'm not far into the story, but there's a cat. I'm into cats. There's the cat on the cover, which is nice. So what I'm gonna do now soon is I'm gonna probably read a couple chapters of Nevernight and I might go mad and instead of reading for the evening, I might actually play a video game. I feel like sometimes it's really difficult to fit in all of my hobbies, even though I don't work a full-time job. So you think I would have all the time in the world, but like, I don't know how people do lots of things or find time for all their hobbies. Like, how do people get bored? Because I always feel like, oh, maybe I want to read or play video games or maybe I want to draw or I want to write or a lot of other things. And I'm like, where do people find time to do all their hobbies? Like, how do people find time to be bored? So yeah, what I might do is I, I might actually play some Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, my partner Sean gave me that game a few years ago and I started to play it a couple years ago when I was actually really not well and was, again, stuck in bed because uh, of chronic illness stuff for a while and it was a really, really difficult time. And then when I started to feel a bit better, I kind of stopped playing it. It's actually quite a tricky game, more challenging than I expected it to be, but um, I was enjoying it and then I kind of fell out of playing it when I kind of got back to the real world. And now like, I feel like every time I th think about playing it, it just reminds me of really feeling unwell. So I think it's about time that I just got over myself and went back to it and stopped kind of allowing something so small to get in the way of me really enjoying myself. So I think that's me for the evening. Tomorrow is a busy day. It is my partner Sean's birthday and he's going to be 37 and I just can't wrap my head around that because we met when he was 32 and he's going to be 37. One, we've been together for quite a long time and it's flown and two, he looks quite young. At 37 sounds really old. I remember my dad being 37. Bit of a busy day tomorrow for that so gonna bake a bit of a cake and it's also our friend Colm's birthday today so we're gonna go for dinner tomorrow with Colm and his partner Sandra as well and Sean of course but yeah I'm gonna bake them both a cake tomorrow just a simple kind of coffee loaf cake I have a few other bits to do with regard to that but I'm really excited to give Sean his birthday present because I actually got us tickets to go see the national in September and they're I guess that band is both of our favorites I also got them kind of a couple of other little bits and I only got him one book quite remarkable because normally we buy each other loads of books he's a big reader as well which I mean if I didn't love him anyway I love that about him too he's great and I hope he has a really nice day and I hope he really enjoys his presence he's working tomorrow so I guess that's not the nicest but whatever Date on it. Oh, so they were going to Dublin. Good morning. It's Monday. It's the 17th of April, so we're actually over halfway through April, which is pure madness. Time just flies. I had a lovely weekend to some degree so baked a cake for Sean's birthday and we went out for dinner with some friends and hung out a bit after ate some cake it was lovely but like my body wasn't really playing ball unfortunately that's 
the nature of my life. By yesterday evening I actually wasn't able to stand up or do pretty much anything that I needed to do, which is not great. This happens every now and again and I've had a pretty traumatic history with my health. So every time that this does happen, I become really afraid I'll be stuck here again. Reading is a great hobby to have when you live in a body like mine because provided my brain is playing ball, I can still read. I kind of fell out of reading when I went to college a bit and then when I graduated and went into full-time work, I was just very tired all the time and didn't read as much. But kind of once I got sick, I really came back around to reading like a lot again. So I guess I'm grateful for that. What I'm not grateful for is David Copperfield. I actually decided that I was gonna DNF it. I just wasn't feeling it, um, especially when I'm not feeling great. I'm like, why am I forcing myself to read a book that I'm not into? And it's kind of putting me into a reading slump a little bit. So I said initially that I was just gonna DNF it for now and come back to it another time. But actually, I'm gonna go one step further. I'm DNFing it and I don't want to read it. I'm actually gonna donate it. I just don't want it. But I think after War and Peace just took so long and it really took a lot out of me. I just feel like, okay, well, I've, I've done the thing now and I don't need to keep doing it. You know, this whole feeling of like, oh, I should be reading this screw it, it should be enjoyable shouldn't it? So I'm gonna unhaul this and then in the nature of not doing things by halves I'm also gonna donate, is it North Anger or North Anger? I don't know but one of those abbeys by Jane Austen. I read Pride and Prejudice last year. It also was a real struggle for me. I'm very sorry to those of you who are big Jane Austen stands but um, I'm not so and then I was like, oh here, F. Scott Fitzgerald, the beautiful and the damned, couldn't be bothered. I did read The Great Gatsby and really loved it, so maybe that's a big mistake. And then this book has been sitting on my shelf for Lord knows how long, years, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Hemingway. I read A Farewell to Arms this year, actually enjoyed it, but I'm like, I've had enough. We're gonna unhaul this too. And then I have another F. Scott Fitzgerald, so it's The Beautiful and the Damned and also This Side of Paradise in one book. And I'm like, you know what? It's just gonna sit on my shelf for years until I force myself to read it. So it's getting donated too. I'm in a very kind of cutthroat mood with my books at the moment. I think I just really feel very unwell and why make life harder than it has to be? In the meantime, over the weekend, I finished Never Night by Jay Kristoff. I really found it difficult to rate because the writing style sometimes was a bit too sarky for me. I didn't like all those kind of footnotes that often felt really irrelevant. And I guess in a way it might work really well for some people because I know a lot of people find the world building and fantasy to be really quite arduous. I can be one of those people so I don't know. And then the fact that maybe that world building was kind of being separated to the point that then made it feel like it was like being pointed out and emphasized just kind of put me off that little bit. I didn't hate it. I ended up giving it three stars. So the writing style sometimes kind of put me off, but I still found it moved quite quickly. I don't know how I would have felt about it if I'd read it all in kind of like one go. So I read like two chapters a day and then yesterday I just had about 50 pages left. So I said, oh here, I'll just crack on with it. What I will say is that at the end it becomes very apparent that it was written to be a trilogy. It wasn't a book that was written and then commercially was successful and then had two sequels. You can see that it was written to be a three-part series. I don't want to give too much away about the um, about the plot but it's kind of about, I've mentioned before, like a group of assassins being trained in a school for assassins to become blades and like not everybody will become a blade they won't make the cut excuse the pun unintentional my little doggy's here <laughs> you might be able to see an ear good girl like it was fine i haven't read jay christoph's writing before sometimes when he was writing about like women i was a little bit mm you know yourself. As part of the schooling, they are basically molded into becoming a more beautiful version of themselves. Like, not like so beautiful that they stand out, but that's the point to make them like an average kind of good looking. So like, 
One thing I found really strange was our main character, Mia. Like, whatever they did with her face. Okay, fair enough, right? But then they just gave her big boobs. Like, you know that, like, a lot of people are particularly flat-chested and nobody notices. And alternately, some people have really big boobs. And again, it's not a big deal. They're just there. They exist. It's okay, like... So I don't know, I always, like, I always get a bit when men start to write about women's bodies. Also, I found it interesting that as a, I guess, middle-aged man, he wrote the book from the perspective of a teenage girl. I'm trying to think, like, would it, would it have mattered if our main character was a male character? Then maybe they wouldn't have been able to give him those big breasts that you know, Jay Kristoff liked to write about. Will I continue with the series? Um, I don't know. I'll see. I'm really bad at finishing out series anyway, so if I'm not finishing ones that I really love, am I going to go back to one that I found okay? In the meantime, I'm reading Get a Life Chloe Brown. I am currently 286 pages in. I'm not typically a romance reader. No shade to anybody that loves romance, because we're allowed to read what we want to read and we're allowed to love what we want to love and there's I just believe that there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure provided you're not hurting somebody else. Obviously we follow Chloe Brown, she's chronically ill and her love interest is Red who is the superintendent of her apartment building and things are after getting quite steamy and they're having a bit of fun but I just really enjoy the the fact that the main character is chronically ill and she lives with chronic pain and it's just a thing, it affects her life and the effects that it has on her life are in the book and it's just, it feels real. So she has this list where she wants to like get a life and like a large part of her reasoning for making this list is because she wants to get a life but also chronic illness and chronic pain make you scared. They make you scared that you're gonna do something and you're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna make yourself unwell and you're gonna have to pay for something because that's the thing about it when you're when you're chronically sick it means generally forever and you kind of have this trade-off between like doing a thing and then being sick or in pain because of doing the thing and sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it doesn't really feel like it's worth it um, so we see that a good bit in this but like so her reasoning for making this list anyway is because she wants to become more brave and I feel like I can relate to that very much as well because I've definitely become afraid of a lot of things um, things that most people wouldn't consider if I have to go to something and there's going to be a long queue I'm not going to go because standing kills me just things like that like I guess that most people don't really consider I'm always like looking around a room like considering the seating like considering whether I'll be comfortable and it makes you really selfish in a way and you have to be because you have to look after yourself don't we all but it makes life really difficult and I just really enjoy that this book is making that apparent it's representing a vastly underrepresented minority, which is young people with disabilities. We exist, we're here. So I really like that. The story is kind of like, it's fine, it's a typical romance in many ways. Not really my thing for the most part, but it's fun. They have a great bit of banter, they're having a nice time, it's lovely to see. And it's lovely to see kind of how Red asks for consent for things as well. And then the fact that he himself is imperfect, you know, he has a history, he has baggage and he's trying to deal with that baggage rather than just being like, oh no, I'm fine, you know, um, like he's not being super brooding, he's like trying to deal with his shit, trying to own his shit, which is really nice as well. Um, and he looks after Chloe in like just simple things that she needs help with without feeling like it's a favour that she owes him back, so that's nice. I am enjoying it so far i believe the author is chronically ill as well maybe it's fibromyalgia the acknowledgements are at the start of the book and i read it and it says in the acknowledgements there's a thanks to a doctor for believing her so presumably she has some sort of illness or disability that is invisible as well it's outside of my comfort zone in terms of reading but i don't hate it 
I don't love it, but I do love the representation in it because I always say it, representation matters. No matter what age you are, I, I would have loved to read something like this when I was younger, before I was chronically ill. Well, I was always chronically ill, I just didn't know I was. I thought my broken body was normal. <laughs> but that's another story for another day. We all should be reading books about minorities written by people from different minority groups. I don't have a lot to compare this to in terms of romance, but I think it's a, I do think it's a decent read and I know that there are two more in the series as well. Again, I don't know if I'll continue with it, but so far I'm enjoying it and I think I'll be a little bit sad to finish it just because it's so nice to see so many things represented that I'm not used to seeing represented. Um, I think this book will hold a special place in my heart just for that reason. I'm gonna sign out there so let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about in this vlog. Let me know how you're getting on, what you've been up to. I hope you're minding yourself genuinely, sincerely. I mean that we all should be minding ourselves and each other. If you've had a bit of fun watching this I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel but as always no worries if not. I'll talk to you soon. Mind yourself. Bye bye.